All right, so let me tell you. It all began with the excitement of a new summer school semester. I teach at the college, and I absolutely love teaching summer school because the students who come to summer school are some of the most motivated students I've ever had. But wait until you hear the story. It was only five days into this semester that started on the end of June, and I had three students I turned in to the school disciplinarian. As I stand in front of you right now, I am on watch by the police department at two of my college campuses because of what one of the students in my class might do. Now, if you think that isn't bad enough, the weekend started and I was out in the garden taking care of these roses, and I see a wasp nest above the front door to my house. And then I see another wasp nest that's down on the ground. And I thought, oh my lord, if these random acts of kindness don't save me, I don't know what will. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't make up these stories for today's speech. It's really my life. I'm telling you the honest to god truth. When I read this piece of paper the student had turned in on a getting to know you so I could better understand my students, there were words on this paper that made me more fearful than I've ever been in my entire life. If I was going to die or if I was going to live. And what about the students in my class? Now, we're not at a 12-step program. This is not a 12-step program. You know, you come in and people go ahead and support you and they, they help you out with that, that information to help one another. It's not a depression support group. Ladies and gentlemen, every day of our lives, there are bad things that happen to us. And it's how we respond that truly make the biggest difference in the world. My talk here today is how we can reduce our stress with random acts of kindness. And so I brought in some of these beautiful roses that came from my garden. And if you don't know what a random acts of kindness is, I already told the librarian that's here as a volunteer, I'm going to leave them with her. These lemons I brought for each and every one of you, that when you leave here today, I want you to have a lemon to make your day just a little bit brighter. Do we all understand what a random act is? Does that make sense? OK, so here's where we're going to go today. We're going to go ahead and we're going we're to take a little tour. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at what research says about this topic of random acts of kindness. And for the last six months, I've had three students across Los, three classes all across Los Angeles, about 150 students doing these random acts of kindness. And what you will find is what the research says supports all of the stuff I've done with my students in the class. And then I'm going to give you some helpful tips of how it can work in your life. And these posters that are on the, the sides of the room, we're going to have an opportunity to see if together we can go ahead and create some random acts of kindness. And just to make sure you don't go away left-handed, I have this sheet that gives you the five tips on how you can bring more happiness in your life and reduce stress as a present that I'm going to bestow to each of you for coming out and spending the morning with me here. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started. Um, as I mentioned, there's an abundance of research that goes ahead and it talks about random acts of kindness. And one of the interesting things is, did you know we're actually hardwired to do random acts of kindness? It sends off the endorphins in our brains. And more importantly, when we go out and I tell you these random acts of kindness, these endorphins come and they make you happy simply by being here and telling you the story. By a show of hands, how many of you guys feel just a little bit better right now? Can I see by a show of hands? All right, that's awesome. I love it. This is awesome. So you're going to get some rewards just from going ahead and being here. Now when we go ahead and we look at the research, there's a gentleman by the name of Sean Anker, and he wrote He's a positive psychology. He wrote an article. It's called Strategy Session of Employee Business News. It was November 2011. He found that 25% of our IQ goes ahead and says, OK, you can be happy. You can be successful. But here's what's more important. 75% of it, the majority, comes from somewhere else. The first thing is your behavior. 
The second thing is your positive social support system. The third thing is the perspectives of how you see challenge. Is it a problem or a benefit? Now, when we go ahead and we talk about behavior, behavior. Are you a person when you're standing outside waiting for the thing to open and it's 10.07, are you overreacting? Or do you simply say, like the people in my back seat, Rosalind, just take a break. They'll eventually open it, right? How many can see themselves on the first one worrying about these little things when they go ahead and happen? How many guys fall, fall habit to that? I see some heads nodding. I'm not perfect. I do it myself. Now, the positive social support, I want to show you here in the audience. I have these lovely people in the front listen to each and every one of my speeches as long as I've been doing them the last six months. They listen to each and every one of them. There are several students here in the front and in the back that are students that take classes in my college. And these are the people that I look and that I count on that bring me the most incredible happiness there could be. And we talk about the perspective. If you only remember one thing that I say, it's the perspective that you take upon challenge. Do you see it as an opportunity? Or is everything you see in life a problem? And if we apply this simple methodology, it's a challenge. How am I going to learn? How is it that I'm going to grow? We can take ourselves to the next level. OK? How many of you guys have, by a show of hands, behavior that thinks takes you in the right way? Can I see by a show of hands? Behavior. OK, what might be a behavior, Elliot, that you might do that might take you in the positive direction? What might be something uh, that you? If I see a challenge, I look at it positively. Like it's something I can get done, not something that's going to be hard to get done. OK, Samantha, what about yourself? Positivity. It helps me through everything. OK. All right, so we've seen a couple examples here of, of that, you know, the challenge. Who in here has a social support group? Social support group. Social support group. Who's the people you go to when, when you've got a challenge or a problem? Who do you turn to? My friends or my kids. That's awesome. What about yourself? The same. OK. And, and what about yourself? What kind of support group do you have? Me? Yeah. Uh, my friends. Your friends. And so we see in our life that those friends are those most important people that all of us have that all of us go ahead and turn to. Um, what behavior would lead us to making some positive actions? What kind of behaviors would lead us to positive actions? What kind of behaviors can we think of? Anybody have any ideas? Behaviors that would lead us to positive actions? Yeah. Maybe offer help without another person actually asking for it. Right. You go ahead and, and you, you help someone without actually asking for them. So uh, when I found the wasp at my house, I don't like anything that could kill me. And so I walked up to my neighbor and I said, I was just cutting some roses. I'd like to give you some roses. Here you go. By the way, um, could you come to my house and look at something? I've, I've got this problem over here, and I was wondering if you could check this out. But I started with the roses. One day I was cutting the roses, and there was too many. And everybody in my neighborhood has roses. It doesn't matter. I went up to this neighbor as he was checking the mail, and I said, here, I'd like to share some with you. These are behaviors that simply go ahead and make you feel better. So let's talk about the second traditional measure of happiness. And this is what research says. In the past, in the good economies, companies did wonderful things for people. They, they took them out to lunch. They took them on trips and so on and so forth. And in today's world, you are pretty lucky if you simply have a job, right? But it's in these times that we live here and now and in the today that we really need those extra benefits. We need those benefits of simply having a person who goes ahead and does something nice for someone else. Um, this guy, Sean Anker, says, we need to shift in our organizations for the way that our brain goes ahead and it filters out information. He says, our brain mirrors information just like a computer. You see, if you go ahead and you feed into your brain bad information upon bad information, bad information, you feel exhausted. When I had the first student who reacted in my class, I was like, oh my lord. It was Saturday, and I saw the second piece of information. I was, uh, 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 words can't explain it. And when I thought that I'd taken care of the first and the second situation, the third situation happened. And I, I was like, I thought this is summer. This is supposed to be good. And so I was really concerned. And this is how the bad news impacts us. But each and every one of us in this room right here has the power to make a change. And today, I'm going to tell you how we go from the bad news to the good news. He says, if instead of looking at the bad news, I heard someone saying, what did you hear in the news today? 
And we'd go ahead and look at the news and we'd look at how many people died, how many people were murdered. But I'm going to tell you what I read in the news yesterday. There was a story of a hundred year old man and his key to happiness is every day he took $20 and he went and he bought a bunch of flowers and he would go around his convalescent center and give flowers to the ladies and he'd tell jokes to the men. It's in the daily news. Go ahead and look at this hundred year old man and how he goes ahead and he keeps living today. If we choose to go ahead and celebrate that which is good, then we can actually change our mind. We can actually change our mind. And it said it's especially important in the business world and especially important in the academic world. Business and academics. There's research that actually goes ahead and shows that being positive in the workplace can actually be better for the employee and better for the company and be better for the bottom line. Now in my class, I tell my students they might be fearful of public speaking, but with this power, they can change people's lives by the messages they have to share. And what I'm about to show you is six months of research that basically goes ahead and says precisely that. We can change and appreciate our happiness that goes ahead and packs all of our intelligence that we have because our brains are hardwired to go ahead and see those positive things that we're doing, those positive attitudes that we have. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look at my classroom. Let's go ahead and take a look at my classroom. When I go ahead and I start my classroom, students are definitely afraid of public speaking and when they have that fear of public speaking, doing these random acts of kindness, telling my students to go out and do random acts of kindness helped in four ways. The first way it's scary standing up here and giving a speech. And people are more fearful of standing up and giving a speech than actually dying itself. Dying itself. And when they get up and they tell these stories of random acts of kindness, the words flow and the fear dissipates. The students who are looking at their phones every five seconds to texting John, Susie, and Mary are listening and hanging on each word. And the most amazing part is when they're done telling these stories, serenity and calm is throughout the whole entire classroom. But the most spectacular part, my students have actually changed the world in truly some amazing ways. And when I simply shared with colleagues at one of the colleges I worked at, that I was doing this random act of kindness, one of my colleagues said, are you doing this by yourself? I want to go ahead and help you out. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and type these things up for you. I'm going to type these up for you. I'm going to help you out. At home, I probably have over 200 stories of these random acts of kindness. And then there's a lady who's about the age of many of my seniors. She has so many health problems that every day it's a challenge to simply get out of bed. And yet she's the person who's edited my 200 stories. And she says that when I go ahead and I type up these words of what you're doing, it brings peace and joy into my heart simply by going ahead and typing up these stories that my students have done. Isn't that amazing? Simply, utterly amazing. So when we go ahead and we, we talk about these, these random acts of kindness and we talk about what the, the next business thing goes ahead and says, it says here that um, we also have this response and the response is on stimulus response. We've all heard the stimulus response. You go ahead and you hit the elbow and the elbow goes ahead and goes back. Well, our mind goes ahead and works like that. And when our mind works like that, there's an author by the name of Kostler, and she mentions there's five ways that you can use to increase your happiness. I'm going to hand these out to you later on. And she says, by going ahead and implementing these random acts of kindness in your daily life, you can actually take away depression. You can actually increase the way that you go ahead and you feel better. And it neutralizes all those bad things that go ahead and happen. Now, the secondary response she had, 
And I'm not going to take a poll on this, but I know that depression is one of the major things that goes on in our society. And simply by going ahead and doing these random acts, you can take that depression and you can flush it down the toilet. You can literally go ahead and flush it down the toilet. How many people wish that they could be more productive? Could I see by an aha? Aha. We all want to be more productive. When you go out and you do these random acts of kindness, it's amazing how much energy that you have, that you can just go out and make it happen. The next thing it says is the resiliency. Yeah, stuff happened, but when I do my random acts, I can bounce right back up. It is amazing. Simply by doing nice things for others, when those bad things happen, I get back in my place and I simply start over again. I simply go ahead and start over again. Burnout, you can say goodbye to it. Simply by doing this nice things, you can actually be successful in the career or work that you're doing. Now there's this ideology, and I'm sure when you hear this, you're gonna say, yeah, I did that. How many of you in your life have ever heard of this saying, if only when I get here, I'll be happy? If only I, I get on that big stage and I'm talking between thousands of people, then I'll be really happy. If only I get that book published, then I'll really be happy. Any of you guys fall into that trap? Yeah. Okay, and, and the researchers say that instead of working on the results, you change the focus and you say, I'm going to be happy right now. Okay, I'm going to tell you something that's dear to my heart. Yesterday, I had no idea how many people were going to be here today. And in my heart, I practiced visualization and I said this world this room is going to be filled with people. And so by putting in your mind what you want to happen, you can bring it to reality. Look at all of you right here. It's a testament to simply putting out to the world what it is you want to happen, and you can really make it happen. Now, the number one people that are really stressed out in the world are tax accountants. I have several of them in my family, and you simply don't check in with them anywhere that comes near to tax season. It's like, leave me alone. This gentleman, Sean Anker, did this research with these tax auditors. And what he did with the tax auditors is he gave them this training on how they could be happier in their lives and how they could approach the tax season. And when the tax season was all over, four months later, these tax auditors who'd gone through the training were actually more happier than all the other people out there. Is that not the testament of success, of what an, a positive, optimistic outlook could, could do for you? What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. So let's go back and let's talk about the students in my classroom. Let's go back and talk about the students in my classroom. And what I found when I went ahead and I looked at my students in my classroom, as I said, they're deathly afraid of, of public speaking. And it's really quite frightening to them. There was a student last semester, I'll call her Maria. Maria saw the students in my class, and every day we'd begin with a motivational statement on the board. And then I'd say, who has a random act of kindness to share? And a student would get up to share that random act of kindness. And Maria said, simply by watching and hearing the stories, it took that fear that she had, and it said, I can do that too. And so when she, get up, when she got up to give the speech, what she found was public speaking isn't really that bad. It's kind of easy. I'm happy to say Maria passed my class with flying colors, flying colors, which is simply absolutely amazing. Now, there's another story of another student here. And she had heard my stories of random acts of kindness. And when this person heard my random acts of kindness, they decided when a friend told them that they had cancer, that they were going to go and make a donation to this cancer society. Now, not only did they tell me about this cancer society, I went ahead and told them this organization. I'm going to share it with you. I want you to write this down. This is an organization. It's called the R.A. Block Cancer Foundation. The R.A. Block Cancer Foundation. And what they are, they're an organization that matches people up with the person who has cancer. They look at your age, they look at your demographic, they look at your race, they look at your, how old you are, what city that you live in, and they find a person to support, to help you out. Any stage, whether you've been a survivor or anything, check out that organization. And so I told my students, and the ones in all of my classes, here's a great organization, I'm telling you. One random act of kindness goes ahead and it 
pushes us to go ahead and do that next random act of kindness. And then we go back to research. And what research says that it's all a matter of our mindset. I want everyone to put their, their hands right here on their head. Put your hands right here on your head. And as you put your hands here on your head, the power to change is between right here. Go ahead and take your hands down, OK? So once again, I'm going to tell you part of my life. About a week ago, I had that horrible situation. If you'd gone through last weekend, you would have put me in the insane asylum. I was, I was pretty upset. I was really upset. And, and I went to this, this workshop. I went to this workshop. And when I went to this workshop, it was this organization called Wake Up Women. Another thing you want to write down in your notes, Wake Up Women. A really powerful group of women who help support one another in their walks of life. And then I came home and I was preparing for this speech. And as I was preparing for this speech, I had this person who was going to show up to my house and help me, and they never came. I looked at my phone, and I'd missed a message. I've had eight cell phones. And I lamented to myself, there goes another cell phone. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And as I sat back, I listened to all those negative stories. And I said, but wait a second here. If I just begin working on the speech, if I just begin working on the speech, and this is what I found. When I began working on the speech, talking about random acts of kindness and how it reduces stress, I became a new person. I was able to sit down and simply go ahead and start preparing based on what I was reading helped me push over the top. Now here's what's really important. When I get really happy and I get really excited, I like to share it with the world. I came in and I told the students in my class, who in this class is stressed out? Some of them are sitting in this class right here. And when they raised their hand, I said, if I had a strategy to tell you about how you could reduce that stress, would you be interested? And they said, yes. Now what's really amazing is I told students at three of my classes, and in one class, 80% of them had actually followed through. And what happens in the world of teaching is, when you've got happy people, how many would agree you learn more? How many would agree you learn more? And when I go to that class, it's the end of a 12-hour day. I'm absolutely exhausted. But they bring me to life because I love teaching people. I like sharing and opening up the doors to help them reach new understanding. And with this knowledge of happiness, I've changed their lives. And I want to change yours as well. So let's see how we do it. Let's see how we do it. The research goes ahead and it says, we can make a choice, bad news over good news. And what we have to do is we need to change our mind. Another reporter in the, des the Desert Morning News, September 2011, Rosemary Howard said, philanthropy is one of the best ways to beat depression. I'll tell you about philanthropy. For seven years, in one of the college I work at, I've had my students go out. They do service learning. They don't On the very last day, as they stand up and they talk about what they learned, their voice radiates happiness, serenity, and a direction in life. Yes, this certainly does go ahead and work. And there's another man's story. His name is Todd Parkin. He wrote a book. It's called One Man's Quest to Beat Depression and Anxiety. And he said, here's where depression really comes from. He says when we're too self-centered and we focus on ourselves, we become not as happy as we would normally be. How many can relate to that statement? Yeah, yeah. We become too focused on ourselves, and we can't, we can't go ahead and get out of it. And so he says, we need to create the positive results. Remember back to the head? you got to go ahead and say, there's good things that's going on. I went to the speech. I listened to some really good stuff. And it's up to me to make it happen. It's really up to me. So there was a student in my class this summer. And she had an internship where she was working at a boys and girls center. And when she went to the boys and girls center, the kids were sitting on the couch. If they weren't on the couch, they were out getting in trouble. And when they were out getting in trouble, the staff had their legs kicked up. They were the most apathetic people you could find. And she walked in. She went to the closets. And she starts opening them up. And she finds these balls. And she takes them. And she brings in some arts and crafts program. These kids became her friends. They became her buddies. They began to tell her problems in their lives. They began to share things they'd never told 
to somebody else because they knew that somebody was there who cared about them. Remember, she walked into this ugly place, people unhappy, depressed. And when she went ahead and she helped them out, she was able to make that shift. There's another article I want to point you to. It's in the Washington Post. It's December 29, 2007. This gentleman's name is Craig Kilberger. And he has an organization that's called Free the Children's Foundation. And he says, in our global world, with global commerce, we have left out our globalized compassion. The result? It's all about the me generation. I was on a hike for the 4th of July, and I was telling one of my, my friends, who's a computer scientist, about the speech I was doing. He said, that's great, Roslyn, but what about everyone else? Everyone else is just concerned about themselves. Why can't we get these other people to go out and do these random acts of kindness? That's why I'm here telling you. That's why I'm here telling you. If I can change one person in this room to go ahead and carry out and doing this random acts of kindness, then I can make a huge difference in the world. When my students ended their semester and I asked them, when they weren't asked on a daily basis, would they do random acts of kindness, do you know what the resounding answer was? It was yes! We want to keep doing these things because you never know when you go out and you do one simple thing for another person how you can change their life for the better. How many could use some of that in your life? How many could use some of that in your life? We all could. We all could. And so when we go ahead and we do this, this, this author, this Craig Ber Kielberger says, kids need to be derided in the positive direction. And he says, when you guide them, you need to be a role model. But you've got to be realistic. You can't tell the kid he's going to go ahead and clean up his room, clean up the neighborhood, and you know, clean up the park. You've got to make it realistic. And he said, it's never too early to start. When I was doing research on this random acts of kindness, they were talking about starting with three and four-year-olds literally was starting with three and four year olds that if you teach kids when they're young they can actually make it a part of their life and so he was saying one of the things that you could do is it could be time I noticed we have several seniors here that are volunteers that spend a few hours each and every week maybe it's simply listening to a neighbor down the street maybe it's showing compassion for a disabled person or helping a person to go ahead and cross the street and there's really no limit to what you can go ahead and do but the best part is this. When you go out and you do a random act of kindness, the results that you get are 10 times the simple act of going ahead and doing that. 10 times. It's pretty amazing. Another article I read talked about seniors. And I'm so happy that so many seniors are out here today to be with me. Because when we get old in life, our friends pass on, our social circles begin to decrease. And it said the amazing thing is, is pulling together, coming out and being with one another. I want to give special attention to this couple here in the front. They're neighbors from mine. They go to the same religious uh, institution that I go to. They are my best friends. When I want to go out and go some entertainment, it's always on the last minute. They're always there. Whenever I call and I need help on a speech, this gentleman sitting in the front is doing some amazing research on this program. He just put together a quarter million dollars helping people who have diabetes. And he'll tell you about it later on. So is he not a busy person? Yeah, he's a busy person. But if we make time for other people, it's amazing the results that we get. It's amazing the rewards that we have. And now we get to the good stuff, the stuff you've all been waiting for. Here are the five keys to how you can actually be happier people. They're, they're sitting here on the front, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll pass this out to you in a few minutes. But I want you to just listen to them and resonate with what they are. And I've got a handout for each of you. Um, this, this lady, Kathleen, in her article, goes ahead and talks about five ways that you can basically trigger your mind. And the first thing is, she said, write, the, write three things that you are grateful for that happened in the last 24 hours. I do a lot of work in my mind, and there's a lady in the back there. Her name is Samantha. And Samantha is the one who actually, when I said I didn't have enough time, she actually went ahead and helped me create this form because I didn't have enough time to go ahead and do it. There is the, the lady 
at, at home. Her name is Sheila. Sheila is the one who documents and edits all the works from my random acts of kindness. She sent me an email last night for my next speech, which is homeless, that I'm giving on Thursday. If you want to hear really inspiring stories of what I've done, it's not homeless, for seniors, it's out in Van Nuys, and you can go to my webpage. It's rosalindcon.com, and you can see these amazing stories. So when I go home, I've got something else to go ahead and look forward to. And then there's a beautiful lady from the New Horizons. It's a place where I went and I gave a speech to some, they, they help people who are developmentally disabled, and they help them be successful in society. And so when I was calling to let her know about my events that were upcoming, it was her phone call that let me know that my event next week is on Friday and not on Thursday. And that makes me extremely, extremely happy. Those are the three things in my life that happened in the last 24 hours that I'm eternally grateful for. The next thing is journal in detail for two minutes in detail about one meaningful event. And I often say, if I had the time, I would have written it down on paper. I would have given you this card. And the one thing that I've come to realize in the last several months is I am so amazed at the love and appreciation that my students give to me and how they've helped me in so many ways. Most people think that teaching is just a one-way street. You stand up there and you pass it out. But what's really amazing is the number of people who've touched my lives that I had the random experience of having as students in my class. I know, standing here, my life is truly a collection of the thousands of students I've taught over the years. Many people think in society that young people are really the people who are behind these major tragedies that we have in the world. But I can tell you from my heart, from my mind, and from my experience, there's some wonderful people that are out in this world that are going to make it a better place that many of you don't know. And so if you go to my blog that's on my handout, stories from my teaching at Blogspot, you can begin to understand these incredible people that are out there. That's number two, journaling each day. The next one is exercise. I want you to go ahead and stand up if you exercise today. Go ahead and give me a standing ovation if you went ahead and exercise today. Please, it's an opportunity to go ahead and stretch. Go ahead and stand up if you've exercised. Awesome. Now, I see about half my class going ahead and standing up. And tell me this answer. When you go ahead and exercise, by a yes, how many of you guys feel better when you go out and exercise? Say yes. 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 Okay, go ahead and sit down. Now, if those of you who didn't stand up have exercised, let's say, um, in the last three days, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, so I see a few more hands going up. How many of you exercised in the last five days? Okay, it's really simple. The exercise you can do can be as simple as going out in the garden. It can be as simply as going ahead and walking the dog. But the little exercise you do sends off those good endorphins, recharges the batteries, and lets you go off and face the world. The next thing it goes ahead and says is we meditate. And so as I sat in the jacuzzi at the pool yesterday morning, I sat and focused on what the speech was going to be like, how many people were going to be here, and my mind created all of you who are sitting in this room here today. The next thing is really wonderful. It says, each morning, send one support email to a person in your social support, thanking them for what you've done. And as I've begun sending out these emails, it's amazing the rewards I've gotten in return. You see, all of us are so busy in our life. We never take out the time to let those other people know we appreciate them for what they're doing. How many people think that these five things could go ahead and help you out? Yes. Definitely, definitely. So I'm going to hand those to you in just a quick second, but I want to go ahead and ask you this question. I want to ask you this question. I want you to go ahead and tell me one thing that I shared with you today that changed your outlook on how you're going to handle stress. Can someone give me an, an answer of what's one thing that you learned today that, that's helped you handle stress that you think might be useful for you? Who's got an answer for me? OK, what one thing did you learn? I think the first one, really, I can apply for myself anyway. When you write down positive things, 
it definitely changes your mindset for a day and you are more geared towards positive rather than negative. Right, exactly. When you simply write those three things down in a day, that's great. Who's got another one for me? Yes? Sending out the appreciation email to somebody. Yeah. That would really yeah, when you send out the appreciation email, you get out of the me-centered world. You get out of the me-centered world, and you see there's a world out there. Who else is another one? Someone else? Someone else? My friend over here? <laughs> you can't think. Oh, my God. Linnea, is there something that resonated with you? How simple it is. Just random acts of kindness and, and making your life better so simply. It's, it's really truly amazing just those simple things that you get out there and do makes your life so much better. One of the things that I always do is hug people and this always makes people feel good. It does. She came here this morning and she went up to the lady who was volunteering. She gave him a hug. Hal was the person who was helping him. She gave him a hug and she makes friends everywhere we go. She literally makes friends absolutely everywhere that we go. Okay, so this is what we're going to do right now. I'm going to turn the floor over to you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you this, this, this handout on these five ways that you can help yourself be happier. And on the board here is, on the board, on the wall, are these different segments. One is, I'm going to put you in groups, and in groups I want you to figure out which is the group that you want to impact the most. You want to impact society. That's, that's the, the people that we don't know out there, somewhere out there. And you're going to come up with some random acts of kindness that you might be able to do for society. It could be anything. Then over here we have the community. And I think about the community as the place where we actually live. The place that we actually live. The place that we call our home. In the neighborhood that we're at. We go ahead and we look over here, and we have seniors. They could be Seniors of any age, any walk of life, divorce, separated, military, they're whoever it is. And the next one there is youth. And I think of anyone who's not a senior as youth. So it's, it's pretty big and it's pretty large. And what I want you to do is I want to get together in groups and I want you to come up with a few things that you think we could do as random acts of kindy, kindness for the people in our society. Does that sound like a plan? Okay, so I'm giving you this, this piece of paper, and on this piece of paper, it gives you the five tips of how you can increase your happiness in your life. And what I'd like you to begin with, to go ahead and warm yourself up in the group, is I want you to share one thing. You're going to start by sharing one thing that you're grateful for. I know it's really hard in a group to go ahead and stand up and say what actually you're grateful for, but I think in a groups of, of four to five or six people, it's going to be easier. So step number one is you're going to say something that you're grateful for in the last 24 hours. Does that make sense? Okay. Then once you've got what you're grateful for in the last 24 hours, I then want you to, to brainstorm for some ideas of how we could go ahead and do random acts of kindness for these various groups of people. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, who's interested in society as a whole? Can I see those people who are interested in society as a whole? Okay, so we got one, two, three. So if you guys could just stand over here, we'll find a place for you to sit in a second. Just come over here to the society as a whole. And then we have those people who are interested in the community as large. Community as a large? Okay, and so we see those people. So the community as a large will go ahead and go over here. And those who are interested in doing activities for seniors, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, so we've got the seniors over there and youth. Who's going in the youth group? Okay, so if you guys could go to your various parts, go to your various parts. You guys have some interesting ideas, what we can do for society, your random act of kindness that you shared with one another, something that happened in the last 24 hours? Well, I haven't heard. I told him mine. No. I haven't heard his. We told each other the names as far as we've gotten. Yeah. So. Okay. So go ahead and... Uh, so you told me what, what made you happy. Well, the fact that I saw my son, daughter-in-law, and grandkids, some oh, of good. my grandkids last night. Oh, good. I already do random acts. Oh, that's wonderful. But I... Hi, I'm Esther. But hi, the thing I feel, uh -huh. it, it could use reinforcement. It's I just good. think it's... I began... I'm retired. Mm-hmm. Many years, but I began helping people when they park. Oh, wow. And it is amazing how hard parking is for some people. Uh huh. Because we all have blind spots in our cars. Right, right, right. And they do everything but kiss me. Wow, wow. <laughs> it's, it's amazing what people do when you yeah. go ahead and you put something yeah. out for them. It's yeah. amazing. Well, little things, but just important. I tuned in yesterday 
and noticed I wasn't breathing hardly. And it had shut down my breathing. And I said, wow, I need to exercise because my body has got used to being sedentary and adapted <coughs> my breathing to that instead of active and adapting my breathing to that. I had to tell it what I needed. It's a cool story. Cool story. Okay, I'm grateful for my family, my nieces and nieces. That's good family. I had the, my sister came over and spent lots of time with them and I'm thankful for that. Cool. Oh, um, I'm thankful for friends that get me out instead of me sitting home alone eating lunch. <laughs> I'm kind of grateful for this event because it kind of allows everyone here to get to know each other and kind of like it's our own little small little community. Right? Yeah, and people from all different social media. Right, right, exactly. So it's kind of like a new experience that kind of brought into everyone's horizons. That's all of you. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to think about brainstorming some ideas of what could be some random acts of kindness that we could do for youth. How could we help those young people out? What are some things that we could do for them to help them see what's going on in the world and see it as a better place? Is that pretty clear? Okay. Just saying hello mm -hmm. is, is nice. Walking by somewhere on the streets. Well, I always do. <laughs> Yeah. So where are we at? Um, I don't know. We just introduced everybody. Okay. And now we're talking about the little random things that we can do without even realizing. Okay. Great. There's one day in one class that I had this situation. I teach some inner city high schools in some really bad neighborhoods. And a student got up and talked about how her father, she'd lost three members of her family. And there was a silence that pervaded the whole classroom. And I got up there and I said, it's amazing that you're able to stand up here and say what you did because it shows us how short life is. And I told each of them to go home and tell those important people in their life what they meant to them. And if I tell you to do something, I'm going to go ahead and do something. And what was amazing was the response I got back from my own family members. I have a brother, it was tax season. In the middle of tax season, I go ahead and I write him this letter of, you know, I never say this, we never talk, and I just want to let you know. I was blown away. He sent me this beautiful email back about how wonderful and how incredible it was and how happy he made him and did I do this for this person, did I do this for this person and this other sister called me and she wanted to talk about it and I don't have very much time to talk in the world. And she was, she was so amazed, it was just incredible. We talk about all these world tragedies that happen, and I say this all the time. We never know when it's our turn. It's our turn. Why don't we just make a habit of telling people as, as we go along how happy we truly are about the little things that, that go on? It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, um, one time, to help seniors, I used to work at the soup kitchen for the senior home, and I met this man named Orville, and he was 108 years old, wow. and he had only a cane, and he had no glasses, no nothing, and he danced to his table, and he was an amazing man, and he taught me that, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, like, you never, it, it won't affect you as long as you just keep positive. He was extremely positive and a really good person, wow. so I keep him with me. Cool. That's a great story. We'll keep sure I'm going to go on to the next other group. So what you guys come up with? We have well, a very interesting we're thinking concept. of um, basically spreading news uh -huh. events are happening for free around the community. So oh, cool. What we can do is put it on telephone posts. Right, right, right. We can put it in people's mailboxes. Right. And now we're talking about a customized website slash app where every time they check their phone, a new event pops up, hooked up with the organization that we created. Oh, wow. Just like CNN has like an right. iPhone and it pops up with all the news. It will pop up and say, today but free it, event, but Grand it. Avenue downtown, right. tribute to Nina. Simone. Right, right, right. People like wake up in the morning and say, "What should we do today?" Oh, look at that! We can do this. this, this. Oh, that's awesome! That's right. awesome! The that sounds really. Is, if it's going to be for the community, apps are for everybody. So right. The app would have to be defined to this community of people in, let's say, Santa Monica slash Venice. Right. You know, there's this this, so. this thing is called Patch.com. Have you ever heard of the Patch? Patch.com. Sounds vaguely familiar. It's Patch.com is like a community newspaper that that you might want to link in with them and, and check them out because that's kind of what the, what they're out there doing. 
there's, you know, there's the neighborhood council and so on and so forth. But it's another thing that you might link with them and see how you can get the word out of, of what's going on and what's happening. But that sounds really cool. Yeah. That's, that's what we kind of are thinking about the community. Cool. Awesome. All right. Like Let me keep going. Let me see what we're doing on time. Oh, my God. Time is flying. All right. What kind of problems do you try and solve? An example. Well, an example. Well, for one thing, this may not be a society thing. I go see people that are in hospice mm -hmm. that I know, not strangers. But that still, I know. but still. And the thing that amazes me is that some people are so afraid of the dying. Maybe afraid is the wrong word, but they're so afraid of being in the same room. We're all, you know, nobody gets out of this life. <laughs> That's right. Nobody. Right. But. My brother will not go see anyone. Right. And I wonder, and I can't approach him, but if you can't stand the sight of somebody, do you at least call them? Do you send them a call? Right, do you right, see, right. Put yourself in that position. They're a human being. That's right. That is so amazing. That is so true. That is so true. Well, it's important. No, it is. It is. It's, it's important. You, you know, there's, it's, it's, the, it's the cycle of life. It's what we out there doing. It's, I remember there was, there was, you know, many members of my family, and as they got through the aging process, my mother-in-law um, had diabetes. Her husband had diabetes, and she had breast That's cancer that that, that, that that breast cancer that metastasized, and she was going limb by limb, and. There wasn't very many people who were coming around to see her, so I threw this party. It was a celebration of her life. And you had 30 to 40 people who came out to that event who celebrated while she was there and she was alive and she was above ground. And as my mother was getting up there in her age, I did a celebration of her life and she was able, she was the best that she could have been. There was an extra four, or I can't remember the time zone of how much longer she actually went on living yeah. based on all these people coming out there. And it's, it's, it's a process. It's what I tell my students, we don't know. We do any of those people in those national disasters stop and know what was going on and what was happening? No. It's, anyhow, I'm looking at the clock and where we're going and the time is, is escaping. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to just have a, a brief report from, from each of the groups and, and if you could tell me in the group um, what, was, what was one of the ideas that people said, you have two things to say, what was one of the things one person said, we don't have time to go through everybody, that, about a thing that they were grateful for today that surprised them, a grateful thing that they had, and what was one of your suggestions on how you could help do random acts of kindness for your, for your groups, okay, who wants to go ahead and start? Okay. So okay. So one thing that I know that we were all grateful for is one thing that she did was give us all a hug when she came over here, and that is just phenomenal. It, it really, really warms my heart, and she's an amazing woman. She so is. I am so grateful for her. Awesome. Okay. And what did you guys, as a group, decide to do of how you're going to go ahead and help seniors? What's some? Oh, we, we didn't, didn't really. Yeah. Yeah. We were just so busy we just getting to know each other. Cool. Well, you got to talk, and that's what it's all about. Because I see just cross sections of society, and that that there speaks for itself. What about you guys in the back? We were talking about how, I guess, being healthy was very important to all of us and for everyone, and that we can all appreciate, obviously, being healthy. And um, one thing that we could do to change, I guess, healthy youth it would be to like volunteer and uh, counsel them. Right. There's an organization I know. It's called Volunteer. Volunteer. It's um, VolunteerMatch.org. VolunteerMatch.org. And it's a really incredible organization. And they hook you together with different organizations and, and different people. Volunteermatch.org is the name of that organization that you can reach out to. Awesome. You guys had some wonderful ideas over here. What did you guys come up with? Well, I've been working on improving the quality of life for patients who are on dialysis. OK. By providing a dialysis machine they can wear rather than going for dialysis. OK. So a dialysis thing that's going ahead and helping the world with something that they can go ahead and wear, which is awesome. Great. Okay, what about you guys over here? We're grateful that we can talk to our friends about problems we had and get that out. And the way we can help our community, we thought that um, we could spread news of free events that are happening by putting like flyers in people's mailboxes or posting up on telephone poles so that people have an idea of things that are happening for free around the area. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Can you guys return to your seats and give everyone a round of applause? Give everybody a round of applause. Okay, so I just want to go ahead and, and wrap us up here. You know, today we began with a horrible story. 
telling you about that, that anxiety I felt about the school that I am at, that I'm under police watch. And as I stand here today, you're probably wondering what, what went ahead and happened. Well, let me tell you the final result. One of the three students I had a problem with is still in my class here today. And I was able to turn the face of time that that student is still in my class today. Another person dropped, and the third person, I'm under police watch, and I just go on living my life. When I do these random acts of kindness, I just simply put it out of my mind, and life is what it's going to be. And I found by using these techniques and strategies, the power is between our two ears. How do we change our mind from what is to what isn't, and how do we help ourselves feel better? So in our research, we covered the research that's out there on random acts of kindness. I told you the success stories of my students in the classroom, and you've seen how it's truly come to life through their experience. I gave you some strategies, which is on this, this sheet right here. And in addition to that, you had the opportunity to talk and share those ideas. And I think you guys came up with some amazing things that are far greater than I ever would have possibly imagined out there. So um, I'd like to go ahead and continue. There, there are some, you have many opportunities that you can go ahead and practice these in your life. And you can see how they work. Now, if you remember how you felt when you walked into class, walked in here today, go ahead and stand up if you feel like a better person now that you've been through this workshop here today. Go ahead and stand up if you feel like a different person being through this workshop here. And so as I go ahead and I look out at the audience, 98% go ahead and have a seat, of the people who are with us here today have seen how you can simply make a shift in your mind and go from one side of the track to the other side of the track simply by going ahead and looking at the things that are out there. Once again, my name is Rosalind Kahn. My business is called Coaching and Professional Speaking, how to master the message with passion and purpose. Now, if you are in the search and you're looking for some ways to go ahead and feel better, on the sheet that I handed to you at the very bottom is my blog. It's called Stories from My Teachings, Stories from My Teachings blog spot. You can actually find some of the stories. If you notice the people who went ahead and volunteered to speak, three of them were students from my classroom. If they stood up there with confidence and you have to give a speech for some place in your life to your community organization, to your family, to your friends, I can help you master that message with passion and purpose. And finally, I want to leave you with this very one special gift. When I attended the Wake Up Women, there was a person who went ahead and talked about where she got her source of inspiration. And she got her source of inspiration from this line. And this line said the following, what will be your fingerprint that you leave on the world? And when I asked my students that question, the results were absolutely so amazing. And so before I came here this morning, I went and I started posting what some of my students had said about how they change the world. Is there anyone here who has any ideas about the fingerprint that they might leave on the world that they'd like to share with us? Any volunteers? Samantha? I already mentioned mine. OK, go ahead and tell us. Go ahead and stand up. <clears throat> OK. Marty, go ahead and tell them. This is Marty. Hi, I was working for a dialysis company as my regular job. And my job was to work between the company and the patient. So I saw these patients, and I said, this is terrible. They go in for dialysis three times a week. They essentially lose three days out of their life, uh, which they just simply sit in the chair. And uh, most of them are bored while they're there. I used to come and show movies of some of my trips and talk to them. So I would try to entertain them. But this, this is really not the thing to do. So I suggested to the company that instead of having the patient go to the dialysis unit, have the dialysis machine go to the patient by building a machine that they could wear. So they could dialyze while they're doing things like our kidneys right now are doing it for us. And the company said, too much blue sky, it cost millions of dollars, and you won't succeed. So when I retired, I 
called up a nephrologist I know, I'm a biochemist. I called up a nephrologist I know, I said, do you want to work on a wearable kidney? He said, yes. And the two of us started working on it. That was in 1986. <coughs> and we worked on it. And in 1999, we're both <coughs> associated with UCLA. So in 1999, we disclosed our invention to UCLA, and they patented it. <coughs> and so actually, we're the inventors, but it's assigned to UCLA. And UCLA is going to try to get money out of it. <clears throat> so UCLA tried to get funding from the United States. And we would talk to people, and an investor would say, well, how long do you think it will take before we would make any money on this? And I say, not, not, at least seven years or more. And they said, well, thank you. And we weren't able, and we weren't, we're not the kind of people that say, oh, you'll have your money back in two years. We knew it was going to take that long. Well, it so happens that my associate was brought up in Singapore. And he went back to Singapore and he said to his friends, look, I have this invention that we have a patent on, and I can't get anybody in the United States interested. And they said, we'll put together some rich people, and we'll get a former company, which it did in, in 2007. <clears throat> So they've been working since 2007 until now, when they've just gone into production and we're just going to start working on animals. So we're really beginning, and it's over seven years already. So our, our projection was right. And it'll take at least three more years before we'll be able to go on the market. Wow, let's Thank give you. a round of applause. Okay, do so you have another quick story? Not so much a story, but I know that I want to do something that's going to impact a lot of people and will empower a lot of people. And what it is yet, I don't know, but just watch out for me. I'll be, I'll be there one day. There you go. That's a really exciting story. And I truly hope from the bottom of my heart that when you came out here today and you saw this program, that I gave you what you wanted and you are truly a happier person and you know what things you can do to go ahead and shift the mind to go ahead and become a happier person. Thank you so much. Gratitude beyond words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.